Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode four of the Canadian Welding Bureau test. Uh, today is the 4GF test plate that we're going to go ahead and perform. Again, we have two starts and stops, each uh, going to take place on the route. One side is a square bevel, the other side is 30 degree angle. Uh, we're running 7018 1 primes once again on the ESOB 235. Uh, about 118 amps this time. Going overhead, I like to run a little bit hotter than vertical. I really want that weld to punch up in there. Plan of attack for this one is I'm going to go ahead and run, uh, run my first pass right into that square bevel. Terminate right here where I'm supposed to do my start and stop. We'll go ahead, clean it at that point, inspect the crater, uh, see if everything's good, if the weld placement is good, if the size, if all, if all that checks out, then we'll go ahead and do that, perform that tie-in, and then we'll start on the bevel side. So if you've already seen episodes one through three, uh, you're pretty familiar with the whole process. Um, we're going to try to build this up flush to eighth of an inch again for our cap, put all our inner passes in there accordingly, keep everything clean. Once again, we're not allowed to use any materials that will remove metal, such as a grinder with an abrasive wheel, chisels with hammers, uh, saw blades, anything of that nature, nothing that can remove metal. So it's just up to me and the buffing wheel, chip and hammer, and a wire brush. So let's go ahead and get into it and get this first root pass in. All right, so everything looks good. Got a nice tie in. Stopped exactly where I needed to. Just using that, uh, that bent rod once again, just as a visual indicator because it's hard to see soapstone when it's so dark up underneath the hood. I'm gonna go ahead and make my tie in again. I'm gonna start about 3 8 uh, ahead of that crater. Get back into it, just pick up like I never stopped. Try to get a nice uniform, smooth tie in. Carry that all the way out to the backing strip. We'll check that out and then uh, we'll proceed on to our bevel side. So at this point, we'd have the inspector come over, look at it. If he gives us the go ahead, we're clear to go ahead and make the tie-in. So everything appears to be good. Let's go ahead and do a tie-in. All right, so at this point, the inspector is gonna come back over, check the tie-in, uh, make sure the weld size is good, make sure you know we're under a 5 16th in weld size, um, and then give the uh, whoever the permission to go ahead and proceed in this case me so i've got this this rod in here to indicate where i need to perform my stop and start now the only uh instructions that pertain to direction apply to the vertical test piece horizontal flat and overhead i'm allowed to use whichever direction that i want and change whichever direction i need to go throughout the test so in my thought process i think it's easier to start right here on this end and carry all that heat and then once again, just do that last inch and a half on the end there versus coming in an inch and a half, stopping, starting, and then carrying out the rest of the test plate. So I'm gonna go ahead from this side up to the, uh, this indicator, and then we'll go ahead and break the arc there. Okay, so at this point, the inspector is going to come up in here again, check it out, make sure everything's good, make sure I stopped where he indicated that I need to stop. I'll be able to go ahead and perform that restart. So we'll go ahead and tie back into that. <clears throat> All right, so we got our tie in right here. It's not the best work, but I think that dog will hunt. Um, so now what's left is inner passes. So I'm probably going to start over here on this side, put that one in first. Then I'll go to the square bevel side, see what I have uh, left with this. Um, probably put another row in, go to cap. We'll see how it plays out, see how many welds we got to stack in there. Remember with overhead, um, this stuff stacks in there a little bit flatter than vertical, very similar to an upside down flat. Uh, so we just got to work on the bead profile, make sure everything stays nice and flat until we bring it out just over flush. Uh, is where I like to be, flush to an eighth of an inch. All right, so everything's pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead, change things up, switch direction. I'm getting a little high on this side and I'm still a little low on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change direction. I'm gonna stand on the other side. I'll strike here, start at uh, this side and end over here. That should bring, uh, keep this side a little low. 
bring this side up a little bit and try to prepare for the, uh, the best situation to start my cap. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm ready to go to cap. I'm about 16th, maybe a little bit over, 332nd, below the top edge, or below the edge of the plate. Uh, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna go ahead and start my three bead cap now. All right, so overall, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. It's nice and flat. Don't have any low spots. Uh, don't have any undercuts, so I don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> bead appearance is good. A little bit, a little bit wider than I, I'm used to because, I mean, it's a half inch gap in the beginning. Usually I run about a 5 16 on a double bevel. But uh, overall, I like it. We'll go ahead and take it down, put some tools on it, find out where everything's sitting at. If everything's good, we'll go ahead and process it and prep it for bend and See if we can pass this one. All right, so I'm just gonna take a look at the edges again. Everything's nice and smooth. It's a little bright. So I don't see undercut anywhere. The ends are nice and flush. Let's go ahead and put the, uh, the V Whacker on there and check for height. So I'm just under an eighth. I'm about a 32nd under an eighth. Everything else is above flush. So we'll go ahead and prep this, get it ready for bend, take the backing strip off, grind the welds flush, and I'll see you guys at the bender. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got our three samples ready. Uh, this is labeled 4R, 4F, and 4R. 4 is the position once again. This overhead is going to be our root bend, face bend, and root bend. These are the order they came out of the coupon. These are the specimens we made. We made sure all of our grinding marks, for the most part, are perpendicular to the way that it's going to be bent. Uh, that's just going to help you out. Corners are radius, we're ready to go. I'm just gonna bend them in order. So we'll start off with the bottom part of the plate, which would be the root, apply the plunger to the face. All the force will be generated to the root. All right, so everything looks good. No signs of, uh, no openings, no slag inclusions. Corners look good, sides look smooth. So that'd be a pass. Let's go ahead and uh, check the face. There's the face, everything's good. No corner cracking, no inclusions, solid, smooth. Let's move on to the last root. All right, We've got two tiny, three tiny inclusions. One, two, three, all of them smaller than an eighth inch. We'll, uh, We'll measure this one because I gotta. I want to double check the specs on this. I know that they're smaller than an eighth of an inch. Depending on the size, you have to add them up and then you're a lot of total sum. So we'll go ahead, let's roll over to the table and uh, we'll get some tools and I'll pull up the spec real quick. Okay, so here's what I was wondering. So I have three of those tiny little indications. One, two, three. Uh, basically it says if you have a cluster of porosity, piece of slag, et cetera, smaller than two millimeters in size, and if the size add up to more than nine millimeters in any 25 millimeter length of weld, a failure will result. These are all less than two millimeters. Two millimeters, uh, the, the uh, standard equivalent is one sixteenth of an inch. And these are all smaller than one sixteenth of an inch. So I would say that would pass. All right guys, so this concludes part four and actually the entire series of the CWB exam or CWB certification. Uh, we definitely appreciate you guys following along for the ride. Uh, again, if you are Canadian or if you've ever taken this test before or an inspector from Canada, go ahead, drop some comments, uh, share some helpful insights in the comment section for any of the people that are following along that uh, would like to take this test. I know I'm definitely going to brush up on my horizontal because I busted out on that one, but hey, three out of four ain't bad. I'm willing to take that. So appreciate you guys following along. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And until next time, make everyone better than your last.